Hi, I'm Bonnie Browning and I'm here at AQS Quilt Week in Daytona Beach, Florida. And I have another winner with us. Robbie Joy Eklo won the best wall quilt. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, I know you're no stranger to winning, uh, but what's it feel like when you win one of these big awards? Oh, this feels really good. Because this is a year I wanted. I really, I had set a goal of do, like work as hard as you can to win a, a big award. So it's only February. Wow. So that was really nice. So it's validation for me because I wasn't sure I should continue on this path of making this type of quilt. So now I feel like I, I can continue. I just need to keep upping my workmanship because every time I make a quilt, I learn a lot from that. And so instead of having to make a right turn, you know, to do something else, I can just keep doing this. You can this. just keep going. Yeah, okay, so well good. now I know uh, that you dye your own fabric, right? Yes, yeah. And so, you know what, to me, it's worth $14 a yard to have somebody do <laughs> that. Uh, but you make beautiful quilts with your hand dyed Thanks. fabric. But, and then I buy a lot of fabric too, but I don't use it, I just fold it up and pet it. So tell us a little bit about how you go about designing one of these quilts. Well, I use um, Adobe Illustrator, but I'm using it more as an AutoCAD program because I took AutoCAD years ago. I was an engineer so but w anyway when one day I took AutoCAD and then so I'm trying to get Adobe Illustrator to rotate things for me and do things so I use it for that just designing in black and white and then um, because my quilts are fused so I run uh, the the fusible through an inkjet printer and I print on that and then I iron on the back of my fabric and, and then I cut it out. Templates. Yeah, so that's how I can oh. get like these really, I cut all these gears out with a small scissors. That's the engineer part of it, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yes. All right, and so tell us about the color scheme. What what process do you go through to choose the colors uh, for your quilts? I call it color schemes for idiots. So what I do is I decide what color I'm not going to use and then I don't use that color. What color, I use, what color didn't you use? What color on didn't I use? Um, there's no red. Pink. No pink. No pink and no red mm -hmm. in this one. So if you looked it up in a color book, it would be something. Because there's yellow, orange, yeah, green, and purple. Blue, blue green, purple. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that's called. Maybe a split clump. Any, it doesn't matter. It's probably split clump. Mm -hmm. So I just use um, whatever colors feel good. Or if I'm looking through a magazine and I really like the uh, images, and, and I decide the color, I just save that and think about it later but I have to use colors that I've dyed the fabric for <laughs> so my color scales are not as full as I'd like them to be. When you dye how much do you dye at a time? Now um, I use four yard lengths. I hang them up and I pour the dye down so and then I cut them in half when I'm going to rinse them because it's easier to four yards gets just tangled up. So in you the don't mushrooms. smush it all up and do it in a no, bucket I, or anything? No I just generally hang it and really? pour it down and I, that's how I get you know, it's kind of wasted in the small pieces because you can't see it. But on some of my other, do you see these stripes here? Yes. That's from the dye. Um, Running. Yeah. All and right, then, now the next question is, do you dye inside or outside? Oh, in the basement. In inside. the basement. Yeah. And is the floor of your basement really pretty? No. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be. It used to and be. And then we got some water in the basement and I cleaned it. But I use um, toboggans, which you know what toboggans are. Cause we live in the Midwest. They're plastic, plastic sleds. If you if you live in Australia, they're a hat. So they thought that was odd. But so I hang it up and I collect the water, the runoff, in a toboggan, and I have plastic on the floor underneath. And then I put fabric into the toboggan sometimes to catch the runoff, and that becomes a nice neutral because oh, sure. you have all these colors mixed mm -hmm. together. And then I just let it sit until it dries. And See, those are the it. kinds of things people like to learn when we have these interviews. Is yeah, how do you yeah. do that? So that's, that's how I, well, I soak the fabric in soda ash because I'm using Procyon dyes. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, if you put the soda ash in the dye, the dye only works for a couple hours. So instead, I soak the fabric in the water with the soda ash in it and I hang it up. And I'm pouring pure dye that's just dye in water down so I can, I don't have to do it all the same day. And then you can just keep adding color, huh? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. I, I've never attempted to do it where you soaked it in the soda ash first, but that you, makes sense. You know, sense. you got to wear gloves. And, well, and, and you glasses. have to wear you have to wear protective equipment, and everybody needs to know that yeah, if they're going to try yeah. dyeing. Yeah, you can wear a 
a mouth thing, one that would oh. help your breathing if you need it. <laughs> All right, well, so now I know that we've used a number of your quilts when we've done different materials that we use uh -huh. for the quilt show. Oh, yeah. And so is that exciting to see your, your design show up everywhere? Yeah, it is. And I've been showing Brian, and so he's finally paying attention to some of this. So that was nice. And they asked if they could use this this year mm -hmm. in one of my other quilts. So that's pretty nice because I've been, I've been going to Paducah my children were babies and my son is 30. So I've been going for a long time and for a long time it was very traditional. And then you'd see one of my quilts and it was kind of like calm, 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 <laughs> like that. So it's really nice now to see my things being more in the, um, the center. I don't, know, I don't know what the right words were. Sure. So, but I mean all of quilting has has well, and, and the styles have changed totally now. You're, it's not unusual to see bright colors like you used to yeah. be the only bright colored one. Yeah. And now you yeah. see lots of quilts that would be bright colored. Yeah, and I used to quilt what was considered pretty excessively, and now there's people quilting even more. So it's all changed. It's very so, good. And so what do you quilt with on your quilts? Um, I have an APQS Millennium, and so I do most of the quilting on that. Now on this, I need it because it's fused, I needed to cover the edges of everything and this would have been, see how tiny the pieces are? Mm -hmm. So I put this on the Millennium without batting. Just the top, Oh, to no secure back. those. Yeah, and I did, every, whenever you, other people should not do this. I mean, they shouldn't touch my <laughs> quilt, but, but it's okay with me. But anyway, this, stick, this sticks up a little because this is thread painted yes. here, sorta, in a way. And then, then I sandwiched it and quilted down here, so it pops up a little bit. So that's how it looks like it's almost trapuntoed. Yeah, yeah. And I think that it could use a little more here and, you know, some more detail. But I ran out of time. But it allowed me to do very deep, very tight stitching over the fused areas, which needed the edges held down, mm -hmm. and not have a completely flat quilt. So that's what I'm going to keep working on. And I think I might want to start embroidering the edges Ooh, that would of be these. Nice. But I'm going to do it with an embroidery machine. Because I've designed all this on, in Adobe Illustrator, it's, it's um, Bezier curves. So they're mathematical curves. So I can take that file and I can send it to... A digitizer. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and then I can have it as embroidery. And I have a digital cutter now. So I wanted bigger, that, those gears, I have an AccuQuilt die that they made. I just sent them the files. But this last quilt I wanted, I wanted the same gears, but four and a half inches. So I sent it to a, 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 a digital cutter, and that cut the cardboard out for me to trace. Okay. And I could have that just do the top. If I gave it a, a, a pen, it would just move the pen around. It would draw it. Yeah, or I could just use a big ink jet, I guess. Well, now, I know that you've won a number of awards with AQS at different shows, and so what kind of advice would you give people about entering shows and, and you know, the risk-taking and the fun, and tell them about what that does for you? Well, first of all, it's a deadline, so that's good, because I need to have, I can sit and I can say, well, I have, like, the Paducah deadline it used to be right around Christmas, but now it's earlier. Yes. So that's good. I like it that they moved it earlier. So I can say, well, I need a month to quilt. So that's November, and I need a month to, at least a month to put it together, and probably a month to design. So I could start a quilt in September and say, I'm gonna have this, this is gonna be my Paducah entry. And it, usually I try to have a brand new quilt to submit to Paducah, and then one that I've made through the year for a, a different show with a different deadline. So I need the deadlines, otherwise I can't make a decision. There's too many options, and I just let things fly. But if I have a deadline, then I'll make the quilt. Mm -hmm. And um, I try to do my best work. But it's, it's very fun to submit. It's fun to have something in the show, even if you, most of the time I don't win anything. But it's, that's really nice when I do. And I, take, um, I have a 35 millimeter SLR to take pictures with. But I think the iPhone lately has been taking, you know, high enough detail. But so that used to be a hard thing. Yes. To, Getting to, the slides made was a yeah, big process. Yeah, that yes. was. And I bought a, 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 I call it an emulsion camera years ago. 
And it paid for itself over and over and over because I learned how to do it. I don't have to hire a professional photographer. And um, professional quilt photographers don't always actually know how to take a good image of a quilt for a quilt <laughs> show. So I would say figure out the camera part or get a friend who knows. And I, have, I belong to a modern guild and I've always told it, if you need help, I will be glad to take pictures for you or, or whatever. And I feel that's my job to encourage other people to enter shows and do stuff like that. So I think you should just do it because if, if your quilt doesn't get in, I submitted two quilts to QuiltCon and they didn't beat me up. I just, they just said, no, thank you. Yeah. And then I went to QuiltCon and nobody said, well, you didn't get in. That's so, right. you know, no, if, you, right. if you don't get in, you don't have to tell anyone. Now, you know what? I used to enter AQS, but I never told anybody I entered until I got the letter exactly. saying it was going to be there. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Nobody yes. knows. And then when you, get, when you get the letter saying it's accepted, now you can crow a little. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and you walk around with your, rim, you know, you're like, this is the... I participated one. The yeah, and then ribbon. this is because I won a ribbon. Yeah. And I, I stapled mine so that they didn't fall off. Well, Robbie, thank you for visiting with us today and sharing things about your quilt. And we thank hope you. that you'll be entering a quilt in one of the upcoming AQS Quilt Week shows.